hurt you if you're not even a bank. It's funny. What? Yeah. It, isn't it funny? I'm sorry to turn this That's off. That's all right. That's very funny. The reason, yeah. because, you know why, because last time you were here, we kissed. Right. And it was a oh, joke. Oh, I see. And I, thought, I see. So you got all the... Yeah. Like That's breath, why. Breath fresheners. Like, what if we kiss again, you know? Right. 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 So <laughs> <you like, know? laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Oh, there. So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. but it was yeah. just a joke. Yeah, and that's not, I don't think that'll That's not going to happen, but I just... Uh, no, no, no. Anyway, I'm going to start yeah. the show, so... Okay, cool. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right, go. Okay, I'll Have see you out one. there. All, All right. right. See you. Okay. So that was, uh, that's nice of you. Happy New Year to you. Uh, this, is, uh, this is our first show in 2005, and it feels different. Doesn't it feel a little bit different? And that's the best part about the new year. It's not last year. And you feel so much optimism going into a new year. You start thinking, OK, this is the year. I'm going to finally quit everything. Not everything. I mean, I'll never quit this job. But and, I mean, how would I pay for my booze and cigarettes? But, that's the greatest part of the human spirit, is that we're always assuming things are going to get better in the future. That's why people buy lottery tickets. That's why people buy uh, pants that are one size too small. That's why the library keeps lending me their books. <laughs> Suckers. You, you, I'm optimistic. This feeling usually lasts for me about till March or something like that. And then that's when you realize you've never used your health club membership once. <laughs> the pants that you bought that were one size too small are now two sizes too small. <laughs> It's a very busy season, too, especially if you're a palm reader or a fortune teller or a confetti removal service. Because <laughs> people want to predict what's going to happen in the future. And uh, I'll, I'll give you my predictions right now. The ability to see into the future runs in my family. Little known fact, Nostradamus was my third cousin. And uh, well, his real name was Nostra DeGeneres. <laughs> he shortened it because he knew that someday there would be monogram sweaters and they would charge by the letter. He predicted that. Here are my predictions. I predict that the better you imagine things for yourself this year, the better they will actually turn out. And I predict that in 10 years, this show's still going to be on the air, and Tony's going to have gray hair, and I'm going to dance exactly like this. <laughs>
exclusive 05. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really feel like my, my, my hope is that I learn new dances this year. I pray that I, because I can't keep doing the same dance forever. I'm bored with it. I know y'all are bored with it. I'm, <laughs> I got to find some new dances. You're doing fine. Yeah. No, I, and I try to pick up some new moves from y'all, because I, I look out in the audience, there's some really good dancers every day here, and I try to pick up little moves. <laughs> we'll show you some of them today, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so how was your holidays? Did you have a good holiday? I had a great holiday. It's good yeah. to be back. Um, I had a great gift given to me. Um, I did an interview uh, with a radio station in Philadelphia, um, Mix 95.7, I believe. And I got home, and the DJ there, Kim Douglas, had sent me 2,000 records. Good records. 2,000? 2,000 records. Wow. And her daughter, her daughter Devin Pye. Hi, Devin. She um, gave me a picture to give to you. That's her daughter right there? That's her daughter. Oh, she has a hat and a pipe. Yep. <laughs> Just That's like a it. great headshot. That'll help anybody get a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had a great one. Oh, that's great. That's a great gift. 2,000 lots, records. Lots of music. The gift of music. That's yes. the best gift to, to give, I say, or, or receive. Yes. I'm definitely. wondering, because I started thinking about this. Everybody, for, for the holidays, you get gifts. And sometimes they are just the worst thing you can possibly imagine getting. <laughs> and you can't believe somebody would think that would be a good gift. So <laughs> I, I think uh, you should send me pictures of whatever you, the worst gift that you got. If you're at home watching, send either your worst gift or send the best gift. Because somebody may send the same thing. Somebody say, oh, God, this is the worst thing. Somebody else, look what I got. So, uh, and if you want to expose them, that'll teach them. They'll never give you that thing again. <laughs> Tell us who it was. Or just send us a picture and uh, go to our website and find out how. But, I want to see those things. And, uh, okay, here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make some predictions right now. And I have my tarot cards. I'm going to flip them over. Oh, look at that. Well, well, well. It's the strength card. Ben Stiller's here. <laughs> ben Stiller is here. He's always wanted a beard. He looks good in leopard print toga. He's in the new movie, Meet the Fockers. He's here. I predict he's going to be sitting over here, and I predict he's going to be funny. <laughs> This uh, right here is the empty cups. It's interesting. It, this is telling me I'm out of scotch. <laughs> oh, it's upside down. I'm sorry. That means Sarah Rue's here. Sarah Rue from Less Than Perfect. Seven cups, seven letters in her name. Clearly, the arrow with the heart through it, that means it's Less Than Perfect. So that's the she's here. She's in that show. And of course, this card right here. Oh, the tower card. Sarah McLaughlin. Sarah McLaughlin's here. You can get a CD and DVD at Tower called Afterglow Live. She'll be performing her song, Push. And, uh, and before I forget, I want to thank all the people who brought in unwrapped toys for our Toys for Tots drive and all the com companies that donated so generously. There's a lot of happy kids running around out there now because of you. Thank you very much. And I know... I know the year just started, but Valentine's Day is right around the bend, and I can already smell the roses, the champagne, the chocolate. I'm sorry, I'm wearing Celine Dion's perfume. But the point is, I thought it would be nice to send off our own Prince Charming Houston to be your little Cupid this February. So we got this idea, and it's called Have Houston Do It For Someone You Love. So if somebody you love could use Houston's help, please go to our website and find out how, and be much better than a box of truffles or something like that. Um, and I didn't get a chance to thank everyone who sent in Christmas cards. I, I, we got one a couple of weeks ago with a cute little baby who looked like W.C. Fields. And uh, I said, you know, if you have a baby that looks like somebody famous, send it in. And uh, you, you send them in. So uh, <laughs> anyway, so please send in any unwanted uh, million dollar bills also. That's fine. <laughs> All right, so we got from uh, Janine Baudry from Redmond, Washington. Uh, the mother didn't send the baby's name, trying to protect the innocent. She thinks that he looks like Clay Aiken. <laughs> we think Rod Stewart. Don Boldo from uh, Rivervale, New Jersey. Little Joey wearing a tuxedo. Aww. That's a good look. He'll go far no matter what he does. Uh, her mo mother thinks he looks like Elvis. <laughs> we think Colin Farrell. <laughs> or Tattoo. <laughs> Elizabeth Cutshell from uh, Webster Groves, Missouri. Uh, her son, Parker. <laughs> she thinks he looks like the Donald. <laughs> You're diaping. Uh, all right, Jennifer Kruger, Woodenville, Washington. She thinks that he looks like Mike Myers as Dr. Evil. But clearly, he's mini-me.
That's great. Thanks so much for sending those in and keep them coming. Now, people, people might look alike, but nobody looks exactly like anybody else, and nobody dances like anybody else either. That's what I love about how people dance and what the expression of dance is. It just, it, it, however it feels good to you is, uh, is the way you should dance. And we got, uh, these are some people that were in the audience recently. Uh, let's take a look. This is how happy dance makes you. She's just, she's just happy, and she just can't <laughs> express it. Now, I don't know where she is, but I want to be there. <laughs> and I'm going to send her this tape, because she could use this as an audition tape as a background singer. Watch, watch those hand movements. She normally uh, has two orange flashlights in her hand and is at the airport. <laughs> this guy's amazing. This guy is so great. Now, this is a great couple. They really seem like they have a good relationship. <laughs> she really gives him his space. That's what I like. Guy. We call him the Swipper. Our floor has never been so clean, actually, after he... Look how amazing this guy is. Incredible, right? When we come back, Ben Stiller's gonna be right here. We'll be right back. I like it. There was a gentleman who stood up going, we're back, and he was excited, and then he realized nobody else did, and he sat right back down. But I like your enthusiasm. Thank you very much. Our first guest is a terrific actor who made us laugh in such films as There's Something About Mary, Meet the Parents, and Dodgeball. He's doing it again in his new movie, Meet the Fockers. Take a look. Please welcome back Ben Stiller. Getting down. Thank you. That's about as down as yeah. I, I get. Do you not dance at all? Have we talked about this before? Um, I don't really dance. Uh, I don't know if we've talked about it before. I don't dance. I'm not c that comfortable dancing in public. But it's very freeing to see your audience. The guy in the sweater. Mm -hmm. That's how I want to get down. Yeah. In public. Yeah. Well, he had so much room. He could go up high and down I know. low. And like no spine. It was all like. No. No, he was boneless, Just, that man. Yeah, and it's, it's freeing, so it's good. So it makes me want to dance when I see but that. But you, you know. say you don't dance out in public. Does that mean you dance at home? I do. I'll dance by myself. Really? Yeah, we all sort of dance. Don't you, you know, Oh, yes, dance I, I dance by myself all the time. Yeah, and dancing, yeah. That's, like, really where I think I do my best dancing. Really? But are you dressed when you dance, or are you naked? Both. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to talk about it that much. Well, then but... let's not. Okay. I'm just curious. I yeah. Because a I... lot of people are, and that's what I love about this. People are uninhibited. They come here and they don't normally don't dance, probably, but when they're here, they dance because it know. feels good. That's why I felt free letting loose like I did. Oh, uh, yeah, because it was wild. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I felt it. Yeah. How was your New Year's? What'd you do? Uh, it was good. It was very low key. It was very low key. Mm hmm. It was. <laughs> How was your... Good. Where was it? Yeah. Um, it was, uh, it was uh, on a tropical uh, Hawaiian island. Uh -huh. It was wonderful. Yeah. That's great. What did, you, um, what, did we, you, what did you have for dinner that night? Um, we had poi. Uh-huh. Traditional. <laughs> That's traditional, right. Yeah, to ring in the new year with some uh, poi. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, no, no, good. You know, not like the sort of... I grew up in New York, so the New York City New Year's is, you know, what I grew up with, mm -hmm. which is a little crazy. You know? Yeah. You know, it's the epicenter. It's like where it's all happening. Sure. My parents used to have a, used to have a big New Year's party, every year. Really? Yeah, and they're not like really. I mean, they're not really crazy party people. Mm -hmm. They're not like hipsters or anything, but they, um, but they used to have this party in the '80s that somehow on the, we lived on the Upper West Side of New York. Somehow ended up becoming like, the big thing. Like it became like the cool party to go like to, which is funny if you, if you know my parents. They, well, I, I mean, I met them. They're very. Yeah, they're just yeah. like fun, but then, but, but, but it became like this actors party, so it'd be like actors and comedians, like Rodney Dangerfield and Andy Kaufman would come and 
Andy Kaplan was here at your New Year's Eve party? Yes, like eating peanut butter sandwiches. Wow. And, um, and uh, yeah. And, uh, just, and then it just started to kind of get out of control and people like we didn't know, and, like Francis Ford Coppola was there one year. And then like, then all of a sudden like the Sex Pistols showed up. <laughs> it became like Studio 54, yeah. our house. That's wild. People, that you couldn't get into the bathroom. Things were happening. That's a wild party. Yeah, And this weird. is Jerry Stiller and Ann Mara, that's, that's their party? That's right. Uh -huh. they're, they're, they're not the 24 hour party N people. No, no, I picture, well, this is probably straight out of the, the party. The, this is wild. Look at that family photo. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah, my sister yeah. Amy, and, my, and that's, a, that's my vest. That's... That's my checkered vest. Did you love that vest? I obviously must have. Yeah. Because I'm really selling it in that picture. Uh huh. I? How old were you there? Um, I would have to say I'm probably like about 11 or mm -hmm. 12. And uh, what a great picture. Yep. That's great. Yep. Now let me ask you this because I see that the the, the clip that we just showed from Meet the Fockers and that baby headbutted mm -hmm. you really badly. Yes. Um, wh how did that happen? That I mean, I it, it, I assume it wasn't real. Right. Yeah. No, they couldn't get the baby to headbutt me, but it. <laughs> <laughs> but the the. You know what happened was like they, they it was that was shot the first day of shooting, which was a huge mistake because they spent the first like week or, or two of rehearsals like getting us acquainted. They're twins who played the one baby because you know right. child labor laws you can't work with baby for more than a few hours. So they spent like two weeks getting us acquainted so the babies would like us and be you know feel comfortable around us. And then the first day of shooting, they shot the scene where I had to react to him headbutting me, but obviously he didn't really do it. So it was like a special effect. So I just like had to hold him and go ah. Which, oh. of course, immediately he, you know, started crying. You know, just incredibly freaked out. And then they put fake blood, and then he's like really crying. So like what you see in the movie is like a real reaction. And then they, then when he, once he was like too freaked out, they brought in his twin, so I could freak him out. <laughs> and uh, then I freaked him out. And then, uh, and then basically every day for the next three and a half months, every time one of them would come on the set and they'd see me, they would break out crying. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. So um, I basically have psychologically damage them for yeah. the rest of their lives. <laughs> I believe I, you have. Yes, and I'm sure that like, you know, in 15 years, one of them will see something about Mary on TV or something and break out crying and not know why. Yeah, not really understand yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, but, that's um, sad. But you know, we kind of sacrificed their psyches for America's enjoyment. So that's true. They're, well, somebody's got to do it. Yes, and, it was and they the... were professionals. No, they're actually, you know, they, they were very uh, well, you know, they, they dealt with the situation well. Mm -hmm. and it was, How old were the babies like in that? The, well, when we started shooting, they were like one, and when we were finished, they were like 14. Wow. It was a long shoot. <laughs> they do grow fast. Yeah. And, uh, no, there, and then there was a stand-in baby who didn't, wasn't upset with me because he wasn't there when that thing happened, so I ended up doing a lot of my scenes with the stand-in baby, Billy, who he and I had a very nice chemistry. <laughs> and we had a nice connection. There was a stand-in baby? There was a stand-in baby. Well, he was like sort of like a photo double baby, and then there was a, also a stand-in baby that they would just bring in to light the scenes. Because, you know, I mean... Well, you got it's it's for the baby's own good because you don't want to like keep these you know it's like fourteen hour days. No, on the set I know, but it's just so ridiculous that they lay a baby there to to light it to use it as lighting. Yes, well, what, what, I mean, you you want him to look good. But yes. You want to give him, give him a shot. He wants you know he should have. It's crazy. Yeah, but it's but, all the lights are hot. You don't want them to. I melt know. Or anything. I did a commercial once years ago with with puppies in it, and it was so hot, and I was all concerned for the puppies right. being lit the whole time. That like, take them out while you're lighting. You know? Right, right. But yeah. They, they put, yeah. Well, there was also a doll too. Good. There was this incredibly creepy, lifelike doll mm -hmm. that that was like made to look like a real child that yeah. we just called Chucky. So there's. <laughs> we named him Chucky. So there's twins. There's a the stand-in baby and, and a and then the lighting and the, baby and the photo double baby and a doll and a doll. Wow. That's right. And, and the cast. And is... then there's a dog. And then there's a cat. The, and the and cast there's... is like incredible. Yes, and there's that too. Yeah. And, and Barbara Streisand is. Barbara Streisand is, is uh, you know, your mama. I, uh, she's my mom in the movie. How she's, did you get her to be your mom? Um, What'd you do? I have no idea how that happened. Because uh, we just thought when we were first putting together the movie, like, wouldn't Barbara Streisand be the perfect person to play Roz Fokker? <laughs> um, and then I guess Jay Roach, our director, approached her. And she hadn't done a movie in eight years. She hadn't done a movie that she hadn't directed in about 20 years mm -hmm. or something like that. So this was a big thing for her to come back and yeah. jump into it. So she talked to him for about six or seven months. And she was on the fence. And then finally, um, I guess it wasn't going to happen. And, and Jay said, you know, to me, he said, like, I don't think it's going to happen. I talked to her today. I think she's saying no. But maybe you should give her a call. Mm -hmm. Just put in a call. And I, I you know, I'm didn't know her from Adam. I just, he said, well, here's her number. Give her a call if you want to take a shot. So I cold called Barbara Streisand. 
<laughs> yeah. and, and how was it? You just go, um, Babs, this is Ben? Well, I, basically, Brolin picked up the phone. Uh huh. So already I was intimidated. Uh huh. And then, um, and then she got on the line, and I, and I just, uh, you know, I just started talking to her, and, and, and I happened to be in London at the time. Mm -hmm. So I guess that was impressive for her that I was calling from London. Uh -huh. Made me seem like some international jet setter or something. <laughs> and uh, we talked for like half an hour, and then she started talking about being, she plays a sex therapist in the movie, so she started talking about how she would play a sex therapist and the details of what sex therapists talk about and intercourse and climaxes. And I'm like listening to Barbara Streisand talking about intercourse and climaxes, <laughs> and I'm thinking, this is, has to happen. This yeah. is like, I can't be yeah. the only one hearing this. This is like yeah. the most fun and funny thing I've yeah. ever heard. So she basically, like after that, I guess she thought about some more and, and then she did it. Oh, that's great. And she plays... Not that uh, I'm taking responsibility for it, but it was really... You no, know, it sounds like it. you did do it. You well, should take responsibility for it. You I, will, I will. Yeah. I will. It was just fun to talk on the phone with her about sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what a great couple. And Dustin Hoffman plays your dad. Yep, and that's right. And he's here tomorrow. Yeah. So. And he's, he's out of his mind. Yeah. I look forward to seeing him. <laughs> we have to take a break. We'll be right back right after this. We're back with Ben Stiller. And how, is, how old is your daughter, Ella, who is um, adorable? How old is she now? Um, she's two and a half, over two and a half now. Over so, two and a half? Yeah, so she's, yeah, she's heading towards three. <laughs> uh-huh. And uh, full on, full on human being. Uh-huh, and yeah. she, so she's got conversations and stuff? Yeah, she talks and, and she, has a, she has a vocabulary and she has opinions and she's very, very strong-willed and knows what she wants. Mm -hmm. And uh, likes me. Oh, you know, she likes you now. Because likes last, me. Yeah, she, like, she didn't like well, you last time. Likes me most of the time. More, oh. much more than she used to. I mean, not that she didn't like me, but she like accepts me now mm -hmm. and will play with me. And we have a nice connection. And um, no, but that's true. Yeah. I mean, daughters usually are, connect to their mothers, and and you know, I, right, I've heard right. this from and exactly. She, you know, because the whole like nursing thing, uh -huh. and, all that. and then and now it's really been great. The last six months have just been incredible, and we get to do little activities together, and you know, she'll. Like we'll take her to you know like Train Town or something like that. Which you, is really, fun. you take your daughter to Train Town? Yeah, d yeah. That's she adorable she, well, that you she, do that. She, yeah. Well, when she lets me, she'll let me do that. She'd rather sometimes just do the pretend trip somewhere. Uh -huh. She likes to do pretend trips. And like where? Which are actually more convenient for me. Well, <laughs> which would be like Barney's or something like that. Pretend or trip to you, Barney's. You're pretending um, to go. No, but like we do a pretend trip to. She's been to Disneyland once, not with me, but mm -hmm. she. But she'll say, "Let's go to Disneyland pretend trip." Mm -hmm. And so we'll get in the car, which is in the garage, and literally like we get in the car and we go, "Okay, let's go," and then she'll go, "Okay, we're here," <laughs> which is oh, that's you know, beats the traffic. That's And then great. we get out, <laughs> and uh, and then we'll and then we'll just go around looking for. You know, dwarves, like the seven dwarves. You know, we're sleepy. We're in the house? What? In the house, outside. Dwarves uh -huh. are hiding all over our house. Oh. Under, under the bed. Um, and, and, and then it's like other characters. I mean, it's all, all the different characters that, that you know, that children are sold. Mm -hmm. She's been, so, already been sold. In, like, Do you have to wait for her to find them? Or like, if you go there, there's one of them, and she'll go, no. You know, like, do you have to? Yes, but she's a very good improviser. She usually plays along. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she'll say, oh, yes, there he is. You know, yeah. like, there, there's, there's uh, Sleepy. He's right around the corner. Oh, yeah, there he is. And then we'll go <laughs> surprise him. And, and then she likes to hide, um, but sort of doesn't quite get that, because she'll say, I'm hiding behind the drape. Yeah. <laughs> But it's good, though, because, you know, it's still the excitement of finding her. Ah! Yeah. And then it's like, ah! And then we get into yeah. crazy screaming fits that we call craziness. Uh-huh. Craziness! That's cute. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is cute. It uh -huh. is good. It's fun. We, you know, we have fun. And, you know, it's sort of... It's also interesting for your, you know, your own psyche. You see, like, mm -hmm. where you go as a person when you start making stories up. Uh-huh. I don't yeah. have a story about that. I'm just no. saying it's <laughs> interesting to see how you make up weird stories. I can see how it's helped you then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you have no story about that. No, 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 no. But it's, yeah. I guess maybe it's just uh, my own, uh, my own sort of like, I, I start telling these stories to her that I, I have, I, that don't have a beginning, a middle, or an end. Uh-huh. Oh, that's great. Well, I, I can't wait to see her. Yeah, she, a, yeah, she's, uh, she's, um, well, you'll see her soon. It's at some point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And all we right. can all play. Play, uh, looking for the dwarves. Looking for the dwarves. Yes. We can take a trip to uh, I the like, moon. I like maybe. taking a trip and not driving. I think yes. that's a really great. If you can in pretend Los to Angeles, go somewhere, it's a huge yeah, advantage. that's a great thing. All right. Well, Meet the Fockers uh, is in theaters now, which it looks hilarious. So thank you. Uh, and uh, Sarah McLaughlin performs right after this. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Our next guest can be seen every Friday night on the hit ABC sitcom Less Than Perfect. Take a look. Please welcome back Sarah Rue. Thank you. So 
to you. Yeah. Well, thank you. And welcome back. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Although yeah. I have to tell you, I have a whole new respect for this whole talk show thing because I hosted, like, guest hosted the Late Late Show a few weeks ago. Right. It was so much fun, but oh my goodness, it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what did you find hard about it? Well, like, I mean, the guests were great and everybody was great and the hives were on and everybody was revved up. Do you know the hives are kind of, remember Mike Myers on Saturday Night Live when he was sprockets? Uh huh. The hives are kind of like sprockets. Hello. Oh. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do they know they're like that? Probably. They wear little suits. Oh, well, then they do. Yeah. They're trying to be the sprockets. Yeah. But, I mean, I just, like, it's such a great job, but it's so hard, and I have so, so much more respect for you than I ever did before. But would you want to do it, do you think? I think it would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. It Don't is. feel threatened. Is it? No, I... I... <laughs> Eventually, everybody's going to have one. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> uh, but no, I think it's, it is a lot of fun. It but is. It, it's, it's a lot, of, a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not like you just come in and all of a sudden you look so pretty and you're funny. Like, you actually have to work hard at it. Yeah, no, I there's... I have no idea. Yeah, no, there's five hours of makeup and then uh, the, wow. the clown lessons. And, <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> did you see Ben Stiller backstage? I did. Well, I sort of was like this with him. But yes, I saw him briefly. Yeah, do you know him? Well, sort of. See, when I was 14, I auditioned for him when he was directing Reality Bites, and it got down to me and one other actress to play Winona Ryder's little sister, which they ended up cutting the role out of the movie. Uh -huh. um, but it was kind of a bad audition, so like I was trying to avoid seeing him again. Uh huh. Did he, does he remember that? I don't think so. Well, what, what happened was I, I didn't know who Ben Stiller was at the time, and he was just really up and coming. Right. And, and um, I was 14, and I was so excited to be sitting next to Winona Ryder, and Ethan Hawke was in the room, like, going like this with the camera, because he was wanting to be a director, too. And, and here's the thing. So I'm doing the scene with Winona Ryder, like, you're Winona Ryder, so okay. I'm doing like this. And then Ben Stiller's like this, you know, trying to give me notes. But I was looking at Winona Ryder, because she had, like, a little piece of bagel <laughs> stuck right there, you uh -huh. know? So the whole time I was sort of like, yeah, yeah, whatever, young hot guy Ben Stiller, and like staring at Winona Ryder's bagel in her teeth. Uh -huh. and, um, and needless to say, I didn't get that job. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, food and teeth can be distracting. Well, it's weird. Yeah. Because Winona Ryder, I mean, she was like this beautiful, like perfect, and she has like this porcelain skin, and then she had little cream cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Did you want to tell her? Well, I was 14. You know when you're 14 and like you see someone's fly down? Like now, as an adult, I'd be like, yo, zip it up! But at yeah. 14, yeah. you sort of are yeah. like, you know, you don't well, know what you, to you say. You become a truck driver all of a sudden. And... <laughs> yo, zip it up! <laughs> Very aggressive. Well, you gotta go quick, because yeah, you don't okay. want to spare them the embarrassment, right? right? But at 14, I, I remember in the audition, like in the middle of the scene, of course, this shows what a good actor I was, I was like... <laughs> oh. You know, trying to like sort of signal to her That without... is good. Because I didn't want Ethan Hawke to know that yeah. she had bagel in her teeth. I don't yeah. know. No, it's, it's a, it's a tricky one. You don't know, to, to tell somebody, especially if you don't know them, you think they'll feel it or notice it. Notice it, or, 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 or like maybe they'll think later, like, you know how when you go home and you look really bad and then you think, oh, I just started looking really bad like five seconds ago. Right, I right. couldn't have looked really bad there's, all day. There's no way my hair like, like, looked like this an hour ago. Right, right, right. So I was sort of thinking that maybe she'd see the bagel later and think that it was just new bagel as opposed right. to all day bagel. Right. <laughs> Unless she didn't have it, except for breakfast, which was eight hours ago, and then it's not. Right. Then it's not new bagel. Yeah, yeah. that's true. But now on the show, you, you'd have to be you, you have to be honest enough because you're you're kissing a lot of people on the show, so you must be able to say, "Listen, there's something here." Yeah, or just get it out for them. You know. <laughs> I'm kidding. You know, it's funny. It's a sitcom. <laughs> this is not some kind of trashy movie you're in. It's, <laughs> you're not making out like that, are you? I. You know, I'm, I'm married. I've been married for three years, and I think that since getting the show, I have made out with more people now that I'm married than I did when I was single because mm -hmm. of Less Than Perfect. Really? Yeah, I and kiss people all the I've kissed every single cast member. And how does your husband feel about that? He loves it. <laughs> he does, he likes it. Christine Lottie was on, she said the same thing. That, that it, is that really true? They don't mind that? I think he thinks it's kind of funny, and then, like, then later he needs to prove himself that he's the better kisser, oh. so really, I it's a win-win yeah. for you. That's a, that's a great thing yeah. to... Well, think about that. If you work in a bank or wherever you work, just try just it out. Try it, out. it seems yeah. to help the relationship. It really does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have to take a break. This, is a, this picture, I, I want to show this when we come back. Okay. It's you and your husband on your anniversary. We'll be right back, okay. right after this. We're back with Sarah Rue. Yeah. 
so you recently had a wedding anniversary, and then we have to show this picture. But what what is your what number of years? Three. Is three years. We were married three years, and um, my husband took me to Hawaii. We mm -hmm. went to Kauai, uh -huh. which is really really beautiful. But rains all the time. In fact, it's the, like the the largest rainfall in the world is in the middle of the island. Right. We didn't know that. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> but um, it was really really fun, and we did a lot of hiking and. Um, the, the best story, and this is, I want to show this picture, but we went on this eight mile hike through what is essentially the Grand Canyon, um, the Waimea Canyon on Kauai. Mm -hmm. And it was beautiful. They have feral goats, which is cool. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. Um, so we go through this hike. It pours down rain. We get covered in mud and we're exhausted. We've had no food. We didn't really have too much of a map, which was a mistake. <laughs> A big mistake. <laughs> so we get back to the car and we were going to go out to a nice dinner because it was our wedding anniversary. And so we get back to the car and we are soaking wet. And so we sort of take off all our clothes and throw them in the trunk. And then we're going around to the back seat of the car to get our nice clothes to change for dinner. So we just kind of, we're in the middle of this forest. Nobody's around, we think. So we get naked, dump our clothes in the back, close the trunk, and then we go to get in the car. And I locked our keys in the trunk of our rental car. I am not kidding you. So we had my little backpack with like our camera and a cell phone and like one very small bottle of water. And um, oh, that is tiny. It's like the yeah. teeniest. That's okay. the tiniest bottle of water. It I've was been. like one of those teeny miniature that you're like, yeah. why bother? It's not even going to count if I uh, drink this, right. you know? Um, and, and so we were locked out, and um, we called. It was two hours for the rental car place to get us keys because we're all the way up in the middle of this canyon. Like, they would have. <laughs> so we decided to make the best of it, and um, we hiked. We hiked a little bit while we were naked, and we hiked up to the top of this mountain, and it was the most breathtakingly beautiful. I mean, we're alone, right? You hiked naked. Well, yeah. Okay. Well, we're married. I yeah, mean, no, it's no, no. Okay. no. I'm just saying it's there's stick, sticky bushes and. Well, all we that. had shoes. We okay. had shoes. Uh -huh. and we were naked, but our shoes were there. Uh, okay. Um, it's a pretty image I have it's in my kind head. Of fun. <laughs> Hiking boots and naked. Just and we, you know, we're covered in mud. I mean, it's really not. It's uh -huh. not that cute or sexy. Uh -huh. um, but there are wild chickens everywhere on the Isle of Kauai, uh -huh. which is really cool. But you were like hiking through feral goats and wild chickens, and you're naked. Yeah. And I don't really know what that says, but it kind of freaked me out at the time, uh -huh. you know. Um, and then we got to the top of the mountain, and we took we took this picture, which I wanted to share with you guys it's a, today. It's a great picture, and what a what a great story. <laughs> there we are, totally naked. naked. That's great. Yeah. Well, well, thanks for sharing the story. You're welcome. The picture. Do you want to you keep that? I do. Okay. Can I have it? Where are you going to put it? I'm not sure yet. Okay. We're someplace very prominent. Okay, good. Maybe I'll blow it up and put it right over my fireplace. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Now that I know that there are boots down there, big, thick, big, thick, muddy boots. Hiking boots down there. Yep. All right. Uh, Less Than Perfect airs on Fridays at 9.30 on ABC. One more thing right after this. Don't go away. Sarah, thank you so much. I want to thank Ben Stiller, Sarah Rue, and Sarah McLaughlin. Tomorrow, Dustin Hoffman and Carmen Electra will be here. Oh, and one more thing. We have three generations of spotlight dancers today. Grandma Margaret Ald, her daughter Susan Polk, and granddaughter Nicole. Take it away. <laughs>